Perfect. So, ah, oh, this is a lovely meeting of 5D minds and souls and spirits. Um, yeah, introducing Mary Soul. And I'm going to let you dive in and uh, introduce who you are. But before that, I just want to say I've just come out of 40 minutes of doing your 5D meditation. Um, mm -hmm. I've had a very 3D day, uh, a very tough day, which I feel will come into the conversation. And I thought, oh, I need to get into a 5D space. So I just did a 40 minute meditation of yours. And it's so beautiful. I love um, I love your voice and we'll talk more about that. But actually, it was it was beautiful because I just sang and danced alongside you. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm very big in in um, in movement meditations. Mm -hmm. I always encourage people to move. Um, and I think especially if you're quite stuck on your energy, just to sing and move with it. So thank you for that gift. And so you are. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you so much for having me today. It's I was really looking forward to chatting with you because we haven't seen each other or spoken in quite a while. Yeah. Yes. So my name is Marisol Ximenez Carrillo, and I'm a singer and an intuitive sound and energy healer. And so like you, I come from the world of theater. So yeah. I've been on stage for over 20 years doing mainly musical theater shows, but have done the sound and energy healing for quite a while on the side. And then a few years ago made it my main path. So that kind of stepped up. The rest kind of moved a bit to the side. and. So I work with sound, I work with my voice as a singer, I sing light language and I combine all of that in my sessions and group sessions. So I do cosmic journeys combined with the singing and toning. Um, and yeah, as I said, I, I do that with groups and also in one-on-one -on -one sessions. Yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, that's a really good place to start because um, 5D living means so many things, but I'm getting my audacity keep popping up which I find quite funny because it's where oh. I record meditations on and it's mm -hmm. like I'm here um but because you came from a background and I remember I think we first connected in a was it a 5d living 5d theater group maybe that you came along? yes yes it was like, because of your 5d theater group yeah. yeah and um and I found it fascinating that you'd come from because I feel like there is and I always send this little light out and this little message out to, to to meet more of the sort of performers and artists and um all of those trying to blend 5d into their work um i have a particular passion and love for performers obviously because of my yeah. own background and spiritual writers but um i wanted to ask you um for how long did you flow with both of them or um did you have a stage where you were going um sort of closet spiritual Hmm. and then in the performing world or did you find that they always kind of fused for you depending where you were on your journey yeah well I mean I've always had a spiritual path thanks to my mom so I've always been aware of that there's more but I was way at the beginning of that path when I started because I was really young I went to um study singing dancing and acting when I was only 17 so I got out of university when I was 21 yeah. um and had a very difficult emotional path back then. So I was aware of the spiritual world, but I hadn't really um, like delved in, how do you say, delve into it? Delved, yeah. yeah. <laughs> delved into it yet. So I was very much like just in the pretty much 3D theater world. And then as my path continued and I got deeper into my spiritual path, I then was able to use that in my theater work to stay more grounded and centered, having to do and having to deal with so many 3D people and situations. So that was the beginning of it grounding me more, of it helping me to sing differently, with more connection, um, my heart being more open. So that helped me. Um, and then at some point, I, when I did more of the energy healing work and began working with people myself, the sound healing began to happen. Right. So, but the way I put it into my theater work was more an internal way of doing it. So, um, so now that I'm like really out of the closet on social media and everywhere with my um, <laughs> light language singing and all the stuff where people think I'm nuts, um, <laughs> I am now actually in the process of finding my ways of blending these things on stage. Like I have visions of creating beautiful concerts with like-minded musicians 
with songs and sound healing. So that's like the big vision that I have around me that I'm aligning with. So that hasn't um, manifested yet in the way that I'm envisioning it, but I feel it gathering momentum. And so that's where I'm headed to then bring it together on stage. Yeah. Oh, let me meet you there on that magical milestone because um, I've been very, I have this, uh, a similar sort of, vision in making the theatre be more of a temple space a temple mm -hmm. art sacred space and because my second play is about um quite dark agenda mind control but then also uh, ancient egypt which is where i feel that agenda steam seeps through yeah. Yeah. but there is also this uh why spiritual people met in ancient Egypt because there was very ascended consciousness there and for me that is where a lot of the sacred words the sound temples the yeah. uh, the beautiful spells as poems and and a very ancient art world that I feel into I'm like oh this needs to come back so yeah in some ways, 3D theatre isn't good enough for me now. It's like this this 5D space is calling in because I dream that it's not just putting on soul stories, but putting on soul healings and soul yes. activations and soul catalysms yes. because I just feel like soul catalysms, <laughs> well, that sounds a bit dangerous. <laughs> uh, soul activations and awakening and shaking it. Mm -hmm. um, because I don't, I, I feel like we haven't um, gone far enough and actually storytelling keeps people stagnant mm. in the way the current paradigm is because it doesn't go, okay, uh, it kind of tells you what it is to be human, but not what it is to be a soul. Yeah. And if you're going to explore that, I feel like you need the whole multi-dimensional realm of what we worked in back then. So yeah I see your vision I'm placing it there let's see how those beautiful worlds meet yes and you did talk about um like being really out of the closet with your sound healing yeah. and was there a stage because when I fell into like topics around what we should speak about spiritual persecution kept coming up mm -hmm. and I was like no <laughs> when I speak 5d chat and it kept coming up kept coming up mm -hmm. And we'll explore how that's coming up more for both of us. But did you feel like, uh, or are you still on that journey of going, get yourself out a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. And now, or now is it just like, this is totally who I am. Yeah, I now am. I'm out, like this is me. And it, but it was a process because, yeah. I mean, I was never a huge social media person, but it's really, it's it serves you well if you use it in the right way. So, um, just before all the madness hit a few years ago, let's put it that yeah. way, I actually made the decision to take more time and space for this path of my energy and healing work um, and take a little theater break. So then the madness hit, and if you didn't participate in certain measures, you were kicked out of the theater world anyway, which I was. Me too. <laughs> so even if I wanted to, I couldn't have been on stage. So yeah. it was actually my, my higher self, future self, whatever you want to call it, was like spot on with the timing, you know? I'm like, Oh, okay. Yeah. Makes sense. <laughs> oh, wow. So I just um, went full into it and then I said, okay, but this means if I want to do it, I'm going to do it right. And then I need to do it a hundred percent. There's not doing it like I'll do it a little bit. So I said, okay, I'm going to have to go all out on social media as well because I have to show myself as I am. If I want to bring my gifts into the world, I have to show them. And so it was like a process because I knew on my social media channels, there were a lot of theater people. And if I would start speaking about star <laughs> beings and witches and light language singing, I knew what they were going to be thinking, you know, she's like just gone over the edge. But then when I made the decision and said, I don't care, this is me, I'm going to live it now. Um, they don't have to believe me. They don't have to talk to me. They don't have to follow my work. They can just unfollow me. They can think what they think. I don't care because if, if I'm not who I am, I'm not going to attract the people that I vibe with and that are on the same wavelength. So it was a process, but now I'm like, no, I'm out there. I don't care what anybody thinks. Yeah, and I feel that very much in some of your posts, you know, you're out there giving your gift of beautiful song. I think it's it's really nice for people to hear about the journey because mm -hmm. I work with a lot of people at very different stages of 
um, the soul awakening journey, mm-hmm. whether that's like looking at different timelines um about the stuff that they've had different levels of spiritual persecution across the timelines or even um very a lot that's coming in now is a very multi-dimensional quite high supernatural spiritual gifts that people are activating that are next level yeah. so all of that's kind of going on and but I think it can be feel easier to activate those in sessions or in workshops or in trainings and then there's a different level of like being completely out there in all that you do and I know I went through a very similar thing where I'd be bringing in I'd be training as a healer and bringing in shamanic drums to the rehearsal room with actors Mm -hmm. and trying these things out and I was writing a whole play about being a witch but I was like I'm not a witch (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you know, it's was like oh no I'm just interested <laughs> and I'm just using these tools and it kind of came slower for me and it sort of got more pushed and more pushed out of the closet yeah. and I, th- I I love how conscious your soul was before lockdown because I went kicking and screaming through mm-hmm. lockdown because I it broke my heart mm. because I'm just about to put my play on and then like lost everything and then it was like and I couldn't even go for work at certain points it was like everything was shutting down and I guess I didn't take it easy um and then I was kind of sort of pushed out of theatre which I'd only just kind of transitioned into so it felt like I was given my dream Mm. and I had it taken away again um but I feel like now on the other side of it I wish I'd have done it more consciously and and trusted that it was all meant to be bigger. And actually 5D theatre would not have been birthed Mm -hmm. if we didn't go through, okay. And even now I look at stuff and think, I'm not that interested in that. Like it's like I scan work for the energy and go, well, that's not me anymore. I'm in such a different place. I have the same thing. Yeah. 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 (laughs) And it's like such a a conscious choice. And I, I think that's quite beautiful for a performer because those that don't know the industry and I was a casting director before a performer Mm -hmm. so I knew the industry very very well but there's an energy of I've got to get this role and it's it's competitive and if I don't do it another person will do it and it's like it's it's like not a healthy mindset I feel and that actually what came out of it when you immersed with your soul's purpose like I was like oh oh, I get it my soul's purpose is bigger than that and I have to write and perform these stories my soul story Mm -hmm. but also that actually that that gripping and that I want to actually say vampiric energy that's kind of in the industry and some of it um and and possibly worse Mm -hmm. (laughs) that it's it's like plugging yourself out of that is a really healthy place to be and then it's just like oh what do I want to feel in where do I want to put my energy yeah. it's just so much more gorgeous than I've got to get this role and I've got you know yeah. this is what it should be like to achieve and I, I feel like it took me a a while on that because I came up through the 3D ranks of this is what a good actor should do and this is how we should follow the game mm. and I think we can get burnt by it yeah um, yeah, and I, I'm sure musical theatre was similarly challenging in some places. Yeah, and it's here in Germany, the theatre world, if, I don't want to be too judgmental, but it's very 3D and I've been doing it for over 20 years. It's really also changed from since when I began and for me, yeah. not a positive way. Right. And I always felt like I belong on stage, but I don't fit into the world that it is in. <laughs> I've had that from the start. I was kind of... I mean, I've, I've always felt like an alien in the world since I was, since I've been here. And also in the musical world, I mean, I've met some lovely people, definitely. But at the same time, stage was my home. But a lot of things around it, I was like, I'm not resonating with this. That's not how I would want to do it. That doesn't align with me. Mm-hmm. So, um, so I'm, even though I miss it now, because I'm in this in-between state, I mean, I've been on stage so much and now I'm... I don't have that um, expression at the moment. I know it'll come in a different way. So even though I miss that part a lot, like especially singing with huge orchestras, which is amazing, I miss that, but I don't miss the things around it, Mm. if that makes sense. 
perfect sense and, yeah. and that made me feel into because I can I can I was like oh I'll, I'll have a little read of your soul and see what's coming and I can really see where you're going <laughs> and yeah, yeah. I can, I'm like this is really <laughs> exciting because we have similar visions and I, I feel like they'll meet um uh at some stage um performatively because this is this this is the soul's calling of what we yeah. want but also to say that I, I totally understand what you say because you know for any performer it feels like a, a drought feeling because for me the love of being on stage is about the energy mm -hmm. you know, it's like that bigger energy that bigger spiritual yeah. thing where you're yeah. really doing something quite magical mm. that I just think is gorgeous and I always have since I was tiny um but that actually I had the absolute blessing and I guess it's because once you've written or are writing a tr trilogy of spiritual plays there's no getting away from it because as soon as you walk in the room it's like well you know I'm, I'm out in every single way now yeah. so you might as well go the full hog and actually the beauty of what that brought in and um, because it being the, the gift of my rehearsal room is that the director um, and producer and co-performer that I work with on the reading of Awaken set the space uh, mm -hmm. shamanically or oh, okay. um, do tap-ins and even though the cast that I was working with weren't um, spiritual like me and we don't want to I, we didn't want to we have to be spiritual to come in because mm -hmm. that's the anti that's the opposite isn't it of that dividing but yeah. it was more like here's the possibility if you want to try mm -hmm. these tools and practices and actually I knew on the level that we were working about holding sacred space and so much so that um, often when I work in its space you'll see like orbs of light being caught on camera yes so you'll feel something a bit mystical going on mm -hmm. um, because that's how we work as healers you know that we we're yeah. calling in all that energy and when it transitions into the rehearsal space, and that's without how big it can go when you bring the whole temple space and everybody that you're working with works in that way. I mean, mm -hmm. that's to come, Marisol. Yeah, <laughs> <I can't... laughs> yeah. yeah. So yes. absolutely come. And um, because this is 5D living, and I know you do some gorgeous um, meditations and I recommend um people check them out and I'll, I'll link in the one I was doing just now because it's stunning because you're singing as well um what got you into the sort of 5d consciousness and what do you love about it okay that's a good question how far do you want me to go back do you mean I want you to go everything 5d <laughs> everything 5d I mean the the beginning of it was probably my healing path when I was a teenager that started it and then it was a gradual thing so I didn't have like a big spiritual awakening like some people have. Some people will have right. either, uh, I don't know, some event, if it's trauma right. or, or something completely different, they'll have something that sparks something. Yeah. For me, it was a gradual path over the past 25 years, I'll say. Wow. Because I was, when I was around 15, 16, I had like severe depressions, like really, really bad. Like sometimes I, th I think if I hadn't been spiritual back then, I might have been suicidal, which I wasn't, because I always said, um, well, if I kill myself, I'll have to come back and do it all again. Now I have a pretty cool family, so I might as well just do it now. Wow, <laughs> so, well, what gnosis. I is. remember thinking that. So I said, well, now you're here, you chose to be here, you might as well just go through it. And But it, it was pretty severe. So like just, how do I say, the pain of existence was like nearly unbearable. Like I just... I always said they dropped me off on the wrong planet. I don't want to be here. So all of this that lightworkers and starseeds can relate to. Yeah. <laughs> and so I was really lucky because um, my parents really supported my path. And so I dropped out of school after 10th grade and then they accepted me at the university in Berlin, which was great. So my dad said, OK, you can go. And so I was barely 18 when I started and I was living my dream. And at the same time on the inside, I was just crumbling to pieces. So um, I went to see some therapists, but that didn't do anything. I mean, I'm sure they're great therapists, but for me, they were just way too 3D. <laughs> like, I could have written it down what they were going to say before I walked in, you know. So 
And then I met a woman in Berlin, she does soul journeying. And that was, I think, in 2008 or 9. And that's when things started to change because with her, I started journeying into past parallel lives, things in my childhood, like all these things where I started to understand why I felt the way I was feeling. And I started to, um, how do you say, heal aspects, bring aspects back and everything that the soul journey brings. So that's actually when it started. And, but I'd say these past two, three years have really been like a boost because of the entire situation, having to mm -hmm. um, go deeper, bringing myself out into the world. So through that, I was called to connect deeper and deeper and go through my limiting beliefs and doubts and everything that comes up when you do your own thing. Um, so I think that's been like the boost in the past years to say, okay, I'm going to really embrace this way of living the 5D. I see what's going on around me, but I choose not to participate in that fear and that anxiety I want to create on a different level. So it was another conscious choice in these past years. Wow. I love <laughs> so much of that. And I, I think it's, it's, yeah, it's interesting to not have that big wake up call and have that mm -hmm. steady thing, because I, I very much, I need, I'm the sort of person that has to get whacked around the head with a big mm -hmm. wet fish. <laughs> it's like, yeah. oh, she's not going to wake up. Um, and, you know, so much so that these things seem to happen to me. Although saying that I do look back and when I decide, I mean, it was a dark night of the soul to get me to train in as an actress at 35. But when I was, as soon as I started your training, I was there reading chakra books going, what if I study the chakras through training? Thinking, I don't know what they'll do, but I'd studied one a month. Okay. And because <laughs> I just thought, well, I'm going to come to training and, and see if the world looks differently if I'm working through my route for my sake when I was going up then. And um, and just wondering why I had all these experiences where all these spirits seemed to speak to me or that all this stuff kept opening up. Um, and eventually I wasn't sure whether I was going mental because I was like, no one else in the room is like feeling all this or yeah. sensing all this. And I was like, I came here to open up, but this is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And I went to see a shamanic healer who was actually an actress as well. And she kind of, and I trained with her in the end and then started doing all these spontaneous past life regressions, which got me onto writing the plays. And um, so I feel like even though there's a few big things that have happened to me, it was actually like training and going through these sort of slow initiations. Mm -hmm. And then looking back now, it's like, oh, I can see where the soul was leading me. But at the time, I was a bit like, what is going on? Yeah. And trying to, to not have all of that open up, it was like trying to shut it down. And I think there's something so um, wonderful about what you said earlier about being like you're full and I feel like the magnetic is the word that the radiant magnetic self is such a gift for yourself your soul and the world because then it gives everybody a license to step in that like that and with that radiance because that is the soul's journey but also um yeah what did I want, I want to say about, yeah, it was about the healing part. And I feel like there's been a real shift. I mean, it, it's been an obvious one for me because I, I, my second play explores a lot of the, the dark agendas mm -hmm. and stuff that I think I just peered up, looked under the veil and then saw, uh, oh, I have to say it like it is, but the filth underneath it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I was used to peering up the veil and seeing the beauty. And then I was like, oh, gosh and that's brought up a, a big healing for me at the same time while my dad was getting sick so the mm -hmm. world got quite dark in a lot of places and I think that's why I feel um it's so important to have what you just spoke about about manifesting and being in the 5d and going I'm going to do this differently mm -hmm. because there is different multi-dimensions we can work from and that for me is what's getting what's getting targeted when you're aware of it you're like oh okay so there is this matrix and I got to learn to get around it and float mm -hmm. above it and and create from there yes. yes um so how 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 do you do that well and oh yeah and I wanted to add and living in a 5d state you know it doesn't mean that I don't have bad days or doubts or stuff coming up or 
dark moments mm -hmm. but I do feel that if you choose to live in that state that you can deal with those things also differently so giving myself space now for when I have difficult emotions has a different quality than it had a few years ago mm -hmm. so so how do you do it well I do when I get up I meditate I mean, I don't have children, so I have the luxury of in the morning not having to take care of anyone. So I just sit down and I meditate yeah. and I'll have days where I journey off and it's incredible. And I'll have days where I'm like, my thoughts are just like banging at me. But to just sit there and breathe, whatever it is, whatever state you're in. Yeah. Um, after that, I do a session of yoga. So as a, also a dancer, I need also movement and to stretch my body. And so I begin my day with that, which is really good because it grounds I ground myself, I protect my space that I work in at home. I do grounding, gridding, protecting, centering, um, because I am very sensitive to things going on. So I do that in the morning. And what has been crucial for me is a path of self love and acceptance, because back then in my depressions, I had a lot of self hatred and through certain issues in my life, um, programs of having to be really good, good enough, and, and all these things. So um, accepting myself as I am in the moment, appreciating myself. So that's been like my big theme for the past years as well. So um, to be more loving with myself, if I might have a day where things don't work the way I would like them to, or um, yeah, that for me is also a 5D way of living, to be gentle and kind, especially with yourself as well. Yeah. And I, I really echo that because I feel that that's the day I had today. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, what, what's the lesson in it? Because I had a really, a really tough day. I went back um, to Luton. I was feeling a lot of grief about my dad. Yeah. I was feeling it from my mum. She was opening up um, some stuff that was quite tough for her. And I felt like I'd picked up so much energy. And I was like, mm -hmm. I'm off you know, how am I going to do this chat when I feel so misaligned? And I actually thought, okay, so you're feeling really off and you've got a lot of grief and you're missing your dad and it hurts. So mm -hmm. what are you going to do? And I thought, I'm going to lay down. Mm -hmm. So I laid down for an hour and did a big karma clearing and release uh, mm -hmm. because I feel as empaths, uh, we usually pick up so much stuff. I mean, I've been traveling through London as well. Mm -hmm. Psychics, we pick up loads of stuff. So a lot yeah. of my practices is what what can I release that's not mine uh, and start from there. And then I I was like, and now I need another 40 minutes. Um, and I was like, I need something to float me more in the 5D. And that's when I did mm -hmm. your meditation to dance and move. And I think that's the gift of space that I give myself these mm -hmm. days that I never used to. Because as soon as my body says something wrong, something's wrong, like my head was starting to hurt. And I was like, mm -hmm. oh, this isn't, this is all stuff I picked up. And underneath that, which I think is delightful, and I really welcome, and that's a place of kindness, is my sadness. So once I get rid of what I'm carrying, it's mm -hmm. like, oh, this is mine. And I'm going to give you space. Mm. Cheryl I always like speak to myself my yeah. name myself to, to feel this and heal this uh, because I find one of the most beautiful moments in as working as a healer is to to hold safe space for people mm -hmm. and I've found on my journey to to cry with people and to witness some of the harrowing things that they've been through and it usually for me isn't in this dimension it's through different dimensions and different timelines and I have spoken about it about the spiritual war and how big it plays out that it's not yeah. just in this dimension and I actually feel that it's it's such a a big gift to give people to to honor that that actually I and I guess because I came from a place when I was like tapping into all these things and quite a few years ago I didn't have anyone to speak about it and then I wanted to write about it and and kind of welcome all the star seeds and all the multi-dimensional healers and the light workers that ever feel alone on this planet that it's like you're not yeah. <laughs> there's a there's a tribe of us and let's keep talking about these stories because I think it's powerful working one-to-one -one with people but I think it's even more powerful if you can come in a community and all yes. sort of share that experience of that I guess it's 
why I said me too earlier about the spiritual me too. And I don't know what that's called, but that's, there's a, there's a movement coming. I feel mm -hmm. yes, kind of the spiritual me too. Yeah. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> oh, great. I'm not alone on this planet. Yeah. And you hear some people talk about it going, you know, whatever their subject is. And I feel like we're all taking our place in the circle and I see it in the temple space because we all have different roles in that circle. And I know that mine's uh, often saying the thing that is a bit unsaid. Mm -hmm. uh, do you actually know what yours tends to be? Because it feels like you have such a, a gentle, nurturing, compassionate energy of holding space. But what do you find it for you? Well, people have said to me, I feel seen with you and I feel safe in your space. That's what I hear a lot. Um, and that's what's important to me, for someone to be seen with all of their aspects and for them whether it's in a group session or in a one-to-one -one, that they are safe with everything that they are that there's no judgment and that all of their lightness and all of their darkness if you want to put it that way is welcomed and and loved in that space yeah and so for me also with the singing it's about assisting people to drop deeper into their heart space so when i sing for a client one-on-one -on -one, i receive the exact light codes and vibrations that serve that person in that moment. So that's why light language is great because it goes past the linear thinking mind, as you know, and then it can, that vessel can be filled and flow into the cells and the non-physical part of that person. Um, so I, what I did on stage, like before a show, I would ground myself, connect, and then I would just ask God or source, whatever you want to call it, to just flow through me, through my voice into people's hearts. And I would imagine before the show started, like, I don't know, five, six hundred, one thousand, depending on the theater, beating hearts in the audience. Mm -hmm. And I and I pictured that through my singing, a vibration that they needed would flow into their hearts. So I think I'm very connected to that heart aspect. Yes, and I, I totally agree. And I feel that's the gift that I got through your meditations before coming on that, that which is what opened me up to I was singing and moving and dancing mm -hmm. and and feeling very connected with the spirit and tapped in through the, through the heart. So that really does, <laughs> that really does work. Well, that's um, good to hear. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh yeah, I thought, yeah, more. Uh, and that's why I think I had to get up and move because mm -hmm. that is the, the little child part of me that, you know, loves, I was brought up dancing on stage. That was my journey in. So dancing on stage and doing magical characters and making magic on stage just feels very natural to me because that was my journey into to acting later um, and and moving the body is something that was quite frequent but I remember I had an intention and I'm going to bring this in because I always um I do a lot of sort of 5d business stuff about having bigger 5d dreams and not limiting them and mine was that I wanted people to have soul activations so remember remembrance of um their past lives when they were killed as a witch when they watched awaken so that i could help being like me too i was yeah. killed as a witch that's why i'm writing it and that actually has already happened through just having readings of awaken and that was in my business plan okay and it was like so i just kind of want to say that you can actually set on the 5d as bigger and I, I, when I put it in, I was like, is that, and I didn't um, put it into anybody like a 3D. Mm -hmm. <laughs> People that had to put down, like down at the job center. Yeah. <laughs> <What are you doing? laughs> yeah. No, it was for me. Uh, my, I had a 5D plan and a 3D plan that I had to submit elsewhere. Mm -hmm. But it was like, that's, that's what we're working with. That's what we're bringing in. These are the next yeah. paradigm of sacred singers and storytellers. Mm. But I feel like uh, spiritual persecution and witches will not go away around no. you. And I, I feel you joined us, didn't you, when we did? I did. Connected event. Yeah. When you and Laura and I always, I, I don't want to. Yes, I didn't want to yeah. pronounce her name wrong. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I had watched your play before that, which I think is brilliant. And I watched it and I was like captivated first by the play and by you as well. And. I agree that it had something activating for me, definitely going deeper into a remembering. And then I participated in your event. And with the journey that you guided us through, I had a very clear um, vision of being persecuted and killed. And 
and I remember feeling something like strapped to my mouth and my throat and I couldn't really breathe or speak, but I didn't know what it was. And then later I told you and you showed me this little booklet. Yes. And I was like, that's it. And I had never seen that before, but yeah. in that journey, I saw it and it was so powerful. And so you, you definitely have such a gift and you do have that, um, activation gift to remember and to go deeper. So yeah, that was very powerful for me to watch your play and then do that um, event with you. Yeah. And thank you so much for bringing that around because my dream was very much and still is. And this, this is what I'm working. So for the past year, I've been um, sort of re redrafting the play to kind of make it a little bit uh, more theatrical with a soul retrieval part uh, mm -hmm. on some feedback on always where I wanted to go and to rewrite anything that I wasn't happy with as a as a writer mm -hmm. um, on the final part and to go one level deeper because as yeah I, I wrote about caring for somebody who was dying of cancer and then I lived it after I yeah. wrote it yeah. so I felt like um, there was something I needed to honor in that that my mm -hmm. soul had, had had put me through that to um to speak into it honestly so I was working on that, but I feel that my bigger dream is about you put the play on and then there's a healing container afterwards so mm -hmm. that when you get those activations, uh, the, 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 because it's, it's a play for everybody because yeah. there's so much in it, but it's also written for healers and witches and light workers mm -hmm. specifically. And I want to have that space that we go, well, this is my story, but let's go into yours and then hold space for that to, to witness it. But I think that the beautiful thing that you're doing and the way it gets even bigger, because I'm like, well, oh, it really should be events, <laughs> theater events, is that you get your storytellers and you get your poems and you get your plays and you get your singers and you get, your... so it's like, this is the kind of movement I feel that we need mm -hmm. in these sacred yeah. spaces that it's like, okay, so you might be activated and then you might need a healing and then you might need soothing and all of that journey because yeah. this is what I do to create the work I do. I do all of that. <laughs> you know, I'll go and yeah. work with healers and, and I'll heal things and uncover things. And I feel that these, which brings me back to your, to your witch persecution and being shackled of the mouth, uh, because that is a very big thing that's happened to to witches and it, it's something I struggle with now like I get a lot of jaw pain and I have to work on releasing that and for me that is directly linked in with speaking your spiritual truth mm -hmm. and being silenced for it because of the yeah. wisdom and the power in it and I find it interesting that it tends to be the speakers or the singers that have been shackled and it always makes me feel into what how were the, the sacred words and the sacred songs coming out that kept getting silenced and the power that was in them yeah yeah and, definitely and now yeah. it's time to bring it out and when you have that connection from the heart to the voice finally yeah. speaking from the heart finally speaking your truth yes yeah. very powerful whether it's speaking or singing yeah yeah and, and what do you think is the most important um, sort of spiritual truth for you? What, what from the journey that you've been on that's really important that you feel for everyone to know? That's a very good question. The most important thing, I think, is to surrender because we experience a lot on this path, but there's a lot we don't know also. There's a lot we can tap into, but I think this whole thing is so much bigger than we can comprehend with our linear minds anyway but yeah. when we journey beyond with the multi-dimensionality of our being but still in this human body i think there is still so much more even beyond everything that we're sensing now and beginning to uncover and remember so that's a big thing for me because i did have those issues of needing to make it work and like as a kid i needed to do everything very quickly to always come back to a point of surrender and and trusting to know that when I do follow my heart's calling, I will be guided, even if I may not feel it in every moment or there might be um, phases of frustration and all of that. But to know and to just trust when I surrender to my calling, when I say yes, and when I then follow my intuition, when I feel it and hear it, 
that I will be led to what's meant for me. So surrender is a huge part for me. Oh, it's huge. And it's something that I constantly come back to, having mm. constantly, um, yeah, just gone, why is this happening now? Yeah. And yeah. I think when you, especially when you're sort of driving, uh, for me, driving the passion business, it's like, mm. okay, I know what I, I love, you know, if I do this, it's it for me, I've, I've got it. But then knowing when to just uh, drop the plays, stop writing them. Um, you know, there was a time that I needed to be with my dad and it's like, I can't be writing a play. Or there was time when it took me a year and a half, I think, to get funded. So mm-hmm. it kept them put, put back. But in that sort of a couple of years it was really like what's for you won't pass you by my friend would always say that mm-hmm. and trust and actually what I learned is that those times when I wasn't ready to write what I could write now and that happened again and again as I go through the trilogy because I haven't spiritually caught up because mm-hmm. I don't know everything and it's like and more will be revealed as I go around the spiral and it's like I, I couldn't be ready you know it's, it mm-hmm. actually takes quite a long time if you're writing spiritual work because you're doing the big old work and sometimes you're not ready to see oh it's it's that yeah. it's like a massive healing journey I find writing oh absolutely yeah I bet right. I think it's like with me for the singing like the further I now go into this type of singing yeah I need to open up more and more because I mean, you you know it in theater work, you rehearse for six to seven weeks, you try to get everything as perfect as possible, you know, yeah. you have to stick to certain things. And now when I do my online sound healing events, I sing intuitively, I don't know what I'm going to sing. Yeah. I just have the music and it comes through in the moment. And that was also an act of surrender. So what you just described with the writing, for me, it's the singing to go in deeper and layers are uncovered and yeah. yeah. And that's a really good point about channeling, because one of my biggest passions, um, and I, I'm launching a Channel Your Soul Story course later this year. Oh, wow. Yeah. About bringing in uh, how to channel your soul's work. Mm-hmm. And soul story, I feel this is so important, because rather than me sitting there going, I'm really frustrated with the industry, like I'm not interested in watching any of this, it's like birthing the new stories yeah. into being. But I, there is that transition. And especially if you've got come from a craft where you have to work hard, like as a, as a writer, as an actor, as a healer, like it, all of them felt like I had to learn a lot and mm-hmm. learn a craft. And then you get to a stage where you go, actually, uh, and I shouldn't call it just, but I don't know how else to say it, but I'm just going to channel and ch- stepping into that. Like now I've done it. All I've got to do is step in, let it all go. And see what comes let it and it takes a big amount of trust i think to go it will turn up and that's how i run all of my healing sessions now i'm like no, i just got to trust in the moment in the soul in the spirit everything that will, what wants to come in will come in and we yeah. spoke about our conversation like this as well we'll just channel it through <laughs> i think that's such an important uh, important point to make because we can do all the courses we want but like you said, at some point we need to let that go. And especially now with 5D, it's for up to us to remember our soul's gift. So we may, may be bringing something in where there is no course for. Yeah. So if we stick, I mean, they're wonderful courses and it's wonderful to do them. I've done some great ones that have also yeah. um, tr- helped me tremendously. But um, I've had a lot of moments where I thought, oh, I need another course. And my guide said, no, you don't. Yeah, not right now. <laughs> not the well, time. Stopped. It won't even take my payment. And it's they like... said, yeah. <laughs> they're like, no, it's time for you to go deeper and remember, yeah. because every session is different. There's no step one, two, three. Like you say, you become the bridge between worlds, and you see what flows through. So it may be completely different. And if you're too stuck to a certain pattern, yeah, then you cut yourself off from what actually wants to come through. So I think finding that balance of, of um doing courses, learning new things, but also trusting your own knowing and remembering and then blending it. And like you say, then letting go and letting it come through. That's yeah, very important. And I feel that that's the way um, sort of a 5D course is going. And it's very much for me, it's like what excites me is remembering that we have gifts that we couldn't even Mm-hmm. yeah put pen to paper about and actually from finding them and figuring out those tools to write it's like wow like mm-hmm. literally 
pulling down scenes from the consciousness like in a crystal ball and watching them is yeah. somehow I do my work now because it's like okay and that's that'll appear in front of me mm -hmm. and that's how you can sort of command the magic so I think sometimes now it's more important to 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 have containers and space holders mm -hmm. of course is to go, go you've got these amazing multi-dimensional gifts but everybody's different everybody's yeah. soul template's different so let's pull those in and work with those and see mm -hmm. what that looks like so it's yeah. really given us permission to be our full full magnetic magnificent selves mm. in this 5d paradigm and do you feel like the 5d is here or that we're on a trajectory to it um I do feel it's here because I think there's so much talk about timelines and splitting and different dimensions of the earth. I mean, of there's so many different ways to look at it, but I do think that in a way it's here because we are creating it. Yeah. It's not like one day the switch is just going to flip and, you know, so. Oh, we're not just going to turn on the light and everything's in 5D. Um, like um, <laughs> I, it would, would, would be cool, wouldn't it? To just wake up. Okay, it's all done. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. So, I mean, of course, if we look into the world, people would say, well, I don't see it. I don't think it's here. And it's not that visible yet, because, of course, we're on that journey. We're at like a breaking point, you know, like old systems crashing. And it's like the lights are the spotlights being put on the planet um, collectively, individually. The dirt's coming up, you know, things that have been hidden are now seen. But I think vibrationally, we can tap into the 5D version of us, you know, and maybe we'll step out a bit and in again, but I do think it's here in the sense that we can experience it, work with it, and as we tap into it, create it more and more, anchor it, strengthen that timeline, that way of being, birthing that new earth, basically. So, yeah, yeah. I don't know if that makes sense that way, but... <laughs> yeah, no, it really does. And I actually, I realized that I had a mission to, to to help the 5D consciousness, which is why I went, right, I'm going to start a company called 5D Theatre because I'm very interested in bringing uh, that sort of dimension into theatrical spaces mm -hmm. for whatever work wants to come through. But that also I wanted to help the whole of my soul family, my soul tribe, people that work with me into that 5D, but also loved ones. For example, I, I was like, I'm going to make damn sure my dad gets mm -hmm. to the 5D because it's mm -hmm. not just uh the paradigm here on earth it's like yeah. where you're transitioning yes. and um I feel very much like a, a soul nurturer role that it's like all souls are safe and protected and uh, go on safe journeys because I feel like that's what a soul guide does and that's a, a 5d way of living between the dimensions mm -hmm. um and that's stuff that you know that doesn't get taught it's like the soul's remembering how to do the work and it remembers yeah. more and it remembers more and it remembers more yeah. So it's a it's a very interesting time to be in. And yes, what is your soul yeah. calling you to do at the minute? Because did you have, are you starting to hold circles? Did I see that about you? Or yes. You so, well? so I have a monthly online event, like a cosmic journey, um, and I embed the sound healing within it. So I have like a good microphone for singing, and it's a cosmic journey. Like we had a dragon journey, a Kuan Yin journey. The last one was with the Arcturians. The next one is um, Water Worlds and Lemurian codes. And so I do that once a month online. And yes, so from July, I'm actually starting an online women's circle with yeah. toning and sacred movement and, and all of that to have a safe space. So I'm just beginning that now in July. Yeah. And yeah, so, but like I said, my huge calling is um, what you've described before to or like the grandest vision to create beautiful events and retreats somewhere in the world in beautiful places with people like you, yeah. where we come together, opening a safe, sacred space for sound, for movement, for journeying, for storytelling. Um, so that would be my dream to offer events like that and retreats like that in beautiful, yeah. sacred spaces. So and yeah. I think that's coming. Like you said, we're coming together now. We're yes. like laying the foundation for it. We're planting the seeds yeah and, and I'm really, actually sorry I really feel that and I want to yeah. say like anyone that tunes into this because that's why I did start up the 5d theater group mm -hmm. well to see who was out there and who was and it felt like the work was in its very early stages then mm -hmm. I think it's because we were going into lockdown so it felt like it was the ideas phase of yeah. like 
oh, I'm just dreaming these things into being. And now it feels like uh, that the dreams are sort of coming down, mm -hmm. but it's like, and then they're going to get rooted. And then mm. I feel like we're going to spread the little things about and, and see how we're going to make this magic. Because it feels like there's a big tribe to call in. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. everybody that's kind of interested in doing this work and yeah. making it happen because it's 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 community stuff. I mean, Absolutely. I can even see the event when I close my eyes. I'm like, oh yeah, there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and I think like what you just described with your course, I think that's amazing because it's so empowering for others. I think that's very important too because there are amazing courses out there and, and I love it when it empowers others to say, I, wanna, I want you to experience your gifts and your soul's essence and assist you and give you that space. So I've had a course like in my field, it's just beginning, it's called Cosmic Voice Activation. But yeah. it's like in the beginning stages, I don't know yet when I'm going to do it. It might be like a, I don't know, five, six, seven week course where it's really about if you want to sing, you don't have to be a singer, but working with your voice, with the vibrations of it, and also releasing the things that might still be keeping you from speaking your truth or connecting to, to that part. Because singing is so spiritual. I mean, when you sing, if you truly want to sing well, you need to be connected to your body. You need to be grounded. Um, it's the airflow going through your vocal cords, you know, and yeah. um, so for me, singing has always been really spiritual. Yes, and that's interesting. I've had quite a few people ask me about spiritual singing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I feel like your course is already going, yeah, people are ready. And I've been like, well, you know, mine's more about the persecution pain and healing mm -hmm. that so that you can access um your voice and mine more through writing but I know that there's a movement of people going I want to spiritually access my voice yeah. and it you put it really well about how you do that because it is all part of the body and and the healing and the everything and the the freedom of that expression through song yeah. which you do so beautifully um and how you I want to say release your voice it feels a very yes. released sound um, mm -hmm. which is why I think when you're hearing it you can feel quite free and that's, oh, that's what's nice. on my feet wanting to flow because it's mm -hmm. like that freedom sound um of yeah. what I always think of the angelic frequency where we're just like ah oh, that's that's higher because mm -hmm. <laughs> I got trained in angelic reiki that was my first training and that was my first consciousness of oh there is a different vibration mm -hmm. oh and this is how you get into it which was really yeah. special so yeah. Yeah, I think that 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 course will be juicy, and I feel like they're getting called to be um, containers rather than courses. Yes, that's that's a nice you know? way to put it. Yeah, and yeah. it sounds like they like really complement each other. <laughs> yeah. No, I think we're, we're we're planting seeds here. <laughs> Watch this space. This is how five D happens. It's like yeah. Sometimes me and Ema, when we have a chat, we go, we should record it every time because we'll come back mm -hmm. to it, and we've planned out our next few years just by <laughs> yes your accident and I want to lastly bring in that I did have a, a dream of um when I could get my theatre up to a stage that it was like very much an associate artist role that I could bring in a lot of other sort of theatre makers and support them in making their most mm -hmm. sort of spiritual stories on stage because that's the bigger dream about you know planting all this in the trilogy is done and then it's bringing in a, a new wave of people to give them the strength to to find their spiritual voices mm -hmm. because yeah. I don't think it is it's easy um and I know for me I I still have to encourage myself to to say the unsaid because I know that's my role yeah. um and say things for example with being a very out of the closet witch and that was a journey for me and then sort of outing that there's a very dark side of witchcraft um mm -hmm. which was quite difficult so I would have rather put that away it's been so long to get witches to rise up and then it's like I moved into not in our name because that's really important to me mm. um <clears throat> and that's what I find the spiritual journey is it's just layers of more depth more healing and more ascending all at once in this yeah. big spiral of stuff so yeah. yeah I think we'll definitely hold space for that um is there anything else that you would like to bring in in the 5G realm that we're in? Um, well, like you just said, you know, it's for anyone. I mean, if you have people in your space that you can talk to about these things, just speaking about it brings momentum to it, you know? 
speaking it into existence to because I've asked myself what can I do more to to um, support my visions and I think it's about embodying what that vision means to you like who am I bringing that vision to life what qualities do I have so to see in my everyday life even though I don't have certain things manifested yet but how can I embody that mm -hmm. like um, like I said I've been recording a lot and I said I, I need to take more space again and more time to just and I do sing for myself of course but even more and to open a sacred space when no one is listening and see what does my voice want to, sh want to show me today maybe there's new things wanting to come through so to always have that um, how do you say openness and kind of stay like playful keep your child alive you know to yeah. be curious and and open and yeah I think that's that's something that helps me that I don't get too pushy and that I take that step back and that I come back to the playfulness. Yes. And that brings me to a, a magical practice to close with, which I think is really exciting. Um, and to say that when I first started to training as a actress, because it was my childhood dream that I was too scared to do. So it took a dark night of the soul to do it. When I set out on acting I wasn't going to let anyone tell me whether I was or wasn't an actress once I was in I was in and I used to just stand in my room performing monologue just for the fun of it so it's just like I just need to act so I like that you're saying about even though you've got this bigger dream which we're going to come round to for a little magical closing there's also you know the license to to like the world doesn't tell you that you're a performer the world doesn't tell you you're a writer or an actress or a singer you do and yeah. so stepping into that energetic space of making sure that you're singing for me, making sure that I'm performing or writing is such a, an important thing. And it's often, and I am speaking for me, like sometimes I don't give myself time for it or license for it. There's so many other things to do that it's something I'm like, and I know that's where my energy goes off. It's like yeah. I'm giving myself to time to play and create. And it's mm. so important if you are a creatrix, energetically then you will need to find space for it and never wait for the industry or the or even divine timing to tell you when the time's right because mm. the time's always right to do that kind of thing um so that's a reminder for me but a reminder for everybody else about how us holding sacred space for the performer or the artist or the creator in you but Lastly, so I had a magical practice that I used to do uh, way back, um, quite a few years back when I was waitressing with people and they were um, always come to me for like spiritual chats. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll go for Dishes, she'll, she'll get all spiritual on you. <laughs> I you always used to rein it back in um, to make it more accessible to everyone. And I had the magical circle where we had big visions and we held space for it. And then we were like, chuck something in and leave it in the mm -hmm. circle, chuck something in. And we all chucked something in, but held the vision together. Mm -hmm. So let's hold the vision of this yes. sacred theater. <laughs> and I'm going to chuck in uh, a few things that are important to me. Really important that soul activations happen in this space. Mm -hmm. That there's a large community of people that come together, people that know about um, running great events and getting people to events, people that know about the ley lines and the sacred spaces are where to put the sacred theatre, that there is already a, a sacred space out there waiting for this to happen. And that um, sacred activating words, sounds and smells are in that space too. That's my magical Beautiful. vision. Yes. Beautiful. Chuck yours in. <laughs> yes. And that exactly those musicians <clears throat> will be attracted to to these retreats places events that hold that vision as well that are so connected where it just flows together in the sound in the music um, coming together with people that are ready to open their hearts on deep levels and to connect on that level mm -hmm. um, and who dare to take those next steps to embodying who they truly are and reclaiming their gifts, their sovereignty, so that we create the space of unity, connectedness, um, creativity, playfulness, and joining in together 
like oh, I just had the vision of like a huge oh see I'm ha I have it in front of me like um, a rainbow vortex of light like just yeah I, I bought this in Glastonbury um, wow. in March that. and I saw it and it had I don't know I just thought creative abundance and yeah. it's like a little flame that goes into a big flame so I've had that vision a lot uh, like a rainbow vortex of flame of creation just vibrating out yeah so <laughs> well, that feels like a great vortex of vision, <laughs> all merged and yeah holding that space putting it out in the ether and knowing that um yeah 5d theater already exists so do get in touch people that have this yes. shared vision <laughs> That is actually why I used to run events to 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 collect people together. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I will obviously keep in touch with you, Marisol. About yes, this. we will, definitely. Dreams coming <laughs> in, dreams coming in. Um, and uh, yes, send your um, sacred circle stuff and your contact details so I can loop it in. Yes, I'll send you all of that. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So amazing. Thank you. And I will say that when you spoke about your vision, my heart got activated. So it's definitely a, a big gift that you have. My heart just went. Mm -hmm. Oh, and, but with you as well. It just... Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I'm always like running with the fire and the activation. And then it was like, oh, so yeah, I think it's, a, it's been a wonderful reminder about the shared energy of mm -hmm. things that come yeah. together in great power. So yeah. thank you so much for your oh. time and sharing your 5D dreams. Oh, thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure. And I, I love speaking with you. <laughs> it's very soul nourishing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Until the next time. Yes. Until the next time.